Hello everyone, welcome to Fast and this is Burak Alanyalolu speaking. Today we are going to have a new video about digital circuit design in which we will design a new project to learn more about some of products and some other concepts. And we will first implement this on a paper as a theory, how we can solve the problem of runway control system as an airport tower engineer. And then we will jump onto VHDL to implement this code on our basis tree FPGA board. And at last, we will go to the lab and learn how we can implement this by using integrated circuits, just like counters or AND gates, NAND gates, NOR gates. We will do all of that. Let's start. Okay, so in the first part, you see that airport tower control system for runways. Learning with a project is always much easier than learning only on a whiteboard. So I have designed this diagram that you see over here. And we have three runways in total, A, B, and C. Now imagine that you are working at the airport tower uh, control mechanism. And you are responsible for understanding if the combination of using runways are okay or not okay. How is it possible? Let me give you an example. For instance, let's say that there is an airplane coming through runway A. So this means that if there is an airplane coming from also B, occupying runway B, it's not going to be a problem. They cannot collide with each other since they are parallel to each other. However, if there is one on A, then if C, runway C is occupied, as you can see, they will collide. So what we are responsible for is just making sure that the uh, runways are not occupied at the same time once they are perpendicular to each other. This might sound complicated, but it's not at all. For this purpose, we have to jump onto our truth table to see how it's possible. Here is a truth table that I have prepared. Now, depending on the previous photograph that you have seen previous diagram, which is on the right side of the screen for you now, we can understand that when none of the runways are used, of course, we will have a one over here. This means that this is okay. There is no problem. Green means okay the uh, situation of the runways are convenient. This combination is convenient because there's no airplanes. How about if there is only one on C and no others? This means that it's also okay. Now, jumping on to other one, if there is only an airplane on runway B, it's also okay. However, as I have stated at the beginning, if there is one on B, if also C, runway C, is occupied, this is inconvenient. This cannot happen. They will crash into each other. We don't want this. Red and zero. This means zero. Now, when we go to only A and no on B and C, again, this is one. And if A and C are occupied at the same time, this is again a zero since they will collide with each other since they are perpendicular. And if they are occupied at the same time, it's a problem. Again, one and one and zero. If, since A and B are parallel, it's not a problem if uh, C is empty or not empty. Like They are parallel, sorry. If A and B are parallel, uh, they are not dependent on each other. The availability of the entire function F, so 1. And if all of them are occupied at the same time, this is again a 0, as I have stated before. So how we will solve this problem is that here we have sum of products. Sum of products means that we will... Uh, or all the min terms that give a result of 1 in the output part. What does a min term mean? It means that we are going to have product of inputs, product of inputs, in which uh, all the inputs are used for once. So I will explain how it's going to work. So let's have a look, look at those variables where we have the result 1. In SOP, meaning sum of products, we are looking for the output where we have the result of 1. So here we see 1s. Here is another one. Here is another one. We have five 
output conditions where we have the result of one. So what I will do is I will now jump onto here to show you more. In some of products, as I said, we are trying to sum. This is why we have this sigma over here. We are going to sum them and sum means or, as you know, from a Boolean algebra. Then products means that we are going to have our inputs in end form. They are products. In Boolean algebra, product means ending, end. Okay, very good. And in sum of products, we are going to take one condition, one row of data, and it has to be an, an output with the result one, as I have said. And then we are going to focus on this. Um, if the output, sorry, if the input for this specific row is zero, if the input for this row where we have the output of one is zero, then we will have xn, that input, with an inverted sign, x bar, xn bar, x inverted. Else if, if the input for that row where we have the output of one is equal to one, then xn will remain as it is. We will not change it. Let me show you with an example. So, as you have seen here, row zero, row zero, gave a result of one. So in the sigma function, sigma f, meaning that we are going to or those f who are one. So let's take row zero, comma. Also, row one will be included since it has the output one. Okay, very good. And also row two, as you can see, because it has the output one and SOP, we want an output of one. Very good. What else? Of course, row four. It's right there. A four, comma, and lastly, row six. Row six. SOP will help us in shortening the circuits. We will have a much more logical way of uh, implementing these combinational circuits because we will not have to input all those cases one by one. It's going to be very, very long. And now what I have to write is, I will write the entire SOP form in order to simplify it in a minute. Let's write, write it down. Here we will see that F is equal to, okay, let's write, the first one, okay? Let me just select another color, something like maybe this, okay? Let me take this zero. So what does F0 as a mean term mean? Let's see it, okay? I will open in parentheses. And as I have shown you in this orange box, if X, meaning the input for that row is equal to zero, then we will have x bar, x inverted. And if the input is equal to one, we will write it as it is. So I am taking now this row, row zero, and let's look at the input. For a, a is equal to zero, as you can see. So according to this rule on the right side, I will just write a inverted. Product, we'll put a dot, meaning that we, we are ending it since this is sum of products. This is the mean term form. How about B? B is also zero. So let me write B bar and also another product, C bar, since it's again zero. Okay, I close the parentheses. Now I will write plus, meaning that an or in Boolean algebra. Now let's go with the second one. Let's take row one, F1 for mean term in row one. Let's focus on this row now, row one. A is zero. Let's open a parenthesis. We will have a product of them. A bar, since it's zero, 
zero, rule is on the right side. B is again zero, okay, B bar product. This time C is equal to one, else if X is equal to one means that in SOP, we have to write is as it is, meaning I will leave it as C. Now, let's see what we will have in the other mean term. We will focus on two, row two. Row two is right there. A, okay, let's put plus meaning or, open parentheses. A for this row has the value zero, meaning that we will have an inverted version of it. Sorry, A bar, A bar, again, times B is one. If it is one, we will leave it as it is, since it is one, B. And other times, C is zero, so it will be inverted in SOP form, C bar. Now, let me just clear this rule as well and let me clear this out and we will have the following ones even much faster we will go to row four okay we are in row four let's do it very quickly a is one so a will remain as it is times b is zero b inverted times c is zero c inverted and the last one, we will have row six. Let's go to row six, it's right there. A is one, open parentheses, A leaves it as it is. B, B is one times B. And lastly, C is zero, so C will be inverted automatically. Now, we will do something which is very logical. We will just try to simplify this. And I will show you how you can simplify it very easily. Let's write simplify. Okay, what I see here is that, let me switch to another color like this one. Okay, here A bar times B bar is common. And also here A bar times B bar is common. Let's factor them out. We can do this in Boolean algebra, you know. A bar times B bar. Okay. In parentheses, what we have here, C bar plus C. Okay, very good. We have factored out A bar and B bar out of this. So this entire term is now simplified into this, right? Very good. Now let's have a look at here. Uh, what we have common in here is that in those three terms over here, like those ones, what we have in common is C bar, C bar, and C bar. Okay, let's factor this out as well. C bar, we have here A bar times B plus, here is the C bar, A times B bar, A times B bar, Again, another plus A times B. Very good. Now these three terms is equal to the term over here. Very good. We are approaching there. I can feel it. Now, here is something excellent. Here is something excellent. Um, we know that C bar plus meaning C bar or C is always equal to one. If it is one, it's in product form. So in product form, one times like uh, X and one does not mean anything. Like if we have a variable like X and X and one is always equal to X, whatever X is, it will be the result. So what we can do is we can just ignore this. Like this term is unnecessary. We don't need it. We really don't need it. Now let's jump onto the second part. A bar times B plus A times B bar. And from one of our axioms, we know that 
This is also equal to 1. You can try it with a truth table if you want. You will see that this is always equal to 1. Therefore, we can see that if this is equal to 1, and when we have an OR, for example, let me write 1 OR X, let's say, it is always 1. Because for an OR gate to give out a result of 1, at least one input which has the result of 1 will be equal to make the result equal to 1. Therefore, if we have 1 over here, our result will always equal to 1. Henceforth, this part is also unnecessary, okay? This part, this entire part is just 1 and it is unnecessary to write in the case of an end. 1 and another input is always equal to that other out input. Hence, I can just say that, okay, we don't have to be that uh, complex with our SOP form. I ignored this, I ignored this, therefore, uh, my equation will be equal to A bar times B bar plus C bar. But it's not over. We have one more theorem, which is De Morgan's theorem. Let me write it here. De Morgan's theorem. So by using this theorem, we will implement this function over here even at a cheaper price on a real circuit. Because here we have a NOT gate. NOT gate. A NOT gate consists of two MOSFET transistors. Let's write two. Okay, here we have an AND gate. And double input, a two input AND gate requires six. Like six of them. Sorry, I wrote four. Six transistors, six MOSFET transistors, because we will need an AND and plus a NOT in that six of them. And we have B NOT, if we don't have like logic zero and one, in which case, in this case, we don't have it. So I will write another two. Here I have an OR. This will be implemented as NOR plus NOT. So four plus two, again, six. And a C NOT will cost us another two resistors. What we will have in this case is that we will use 18 transistors. This is too much. This is too much for such a design. We can use the Morgan's theorem to simplify it even forward. Let's see how we can just achieve this purpose. So by using the Morgan's theorem, we will just take this uh, first part. Yes, first part here. We will work on this. What we can do is A bar times B bar is nothing but in a dual form, I can say. It is just equal to A, the bar on A will be remote, removed. And that product will be replaced by an OR, like end will be replaced by an OR. And B bar will be replaced by B. And we will carry the entire bars on A and B on top of the whole function, which will make this equal to A nor B. That's it. And a nor will cost us only four transistors. Four transistors. Great. We have achieved a huge purpose. Previously, we required two for this one, then six for this one, and then another two for this one. It was just too much from 10 to 4 for this specific part by using only the Morgan's theorem. So in the Morgan's theorem, if we have a case like this, what we do is we make A bar A, we make B bar a B, and instead of 
an end gate in the middle, we are having a OR gate. OR gate. And it's also vice versa. If you have something in this form and NOR, you can just make it into a situation like this. Very good, if you need it, I mean. Now let's look at how this is going to look with logic gates. So in this case, I have carried out the form of the equation that we had after Morgan's theorem, the Morgan's theorem, and we have A, B, and C. Let's see how they are going to function in this case. So this A nor B is implemented over here. A comes, B comes, and this is the sign for nor gate. Then I have C and C has been connected to a NOT gate to have C bar in here. And the result of those two, those two, is connected with an OR gate. So for this OR gate over here, for this and this part connecting the uh, outputs of those two parts, we have an OR gate. Then we have F. We will reach F by using this simple diagram. Now we will jump onto VHDL implementation on Basis3 FPGA board. We have it over here. Let's start with the code part. We do not connect it yet. Uh, when we open Vivado, we see this page. We will say create project, then save. Okay, project name will be flight control, okay save it uh we can specify it we'll select rtl project next here it will ask us to add sources meaning inputs and outputs uh let's say create file from here uh, we'll change this to vhtl file type and file name will be um okay flight control is also fine for here okay we have it here then we will click next it asks R to add constraints. I will add it later, not here. Constraints will help us to uh, associate our inputs with the uh, inputs over here, like the hardware on here. I will explain it in more detail in the next parts. Let's say next. Now uh, we will go to family. We will select Arctic 7. I'm talking about basis 3 FPGA board. So uh, if you have this board, please make those selections. In package, we see CPG236. You can also see this on the processor. It's very small, but you can read it. CPG236. Speed is minus 1L. And it will be the one in the middle where the flip flops is uh, 41,600. Uh, I selected it. Let's say next. OK, finish the project. It will open up. Let's wait until it's initialized. OK, here it asks R to define a module, meaning that we will have our inputs and outputs, as you can see here. Entity name is very good, flight control. Now, for port name, we will say A, as you can remember from our theoretical part. Then B, it's also an input. And we have C, added one more. Then this will be F, but don't forget to make this direction out. We have in, out, in, out. Very good. We don't need bus notation for now. Let's say OK. And it will create our design sources. Here, you don't need to do much because everything is done uh, thanks to our design uh, sources package. Like here, you can see that an entity for flight control is created and ports are assigned. Uh, for standard logic, we see A as an input, as a component of standard logic. Standard logic helps us a lot. And we have our entity. Now, in architecture parts, architecture will allow us to enter our uh, functions, process, and uh, what we want from our combinational circuit to do. So below this begin point, uh, we will write F is equal to, you can remember that from the theoretical part, but um, so sorry, um, A nor B. And we said or not C. And don't forget that semicolon at the end. Here you can see that this is all we have to do in this part. Then control S 
to save our files. And you can see F will be A nor B or not C. Very good. This is the function. Since this was a simple project, we don't need to do uh, too many processes over here. In the upcoming projects, we will have to work a lot on this. Now I will click on constraints. We can just close this design sources. When I come to uh, constraints, just right click, add sources, add or create constraints. Next. And then we will just say, um, create a file. XDC is correct. And let's say flight constraints. Const is equal uh, enough for uh, this case. OK. Now let's say finish. Here, what we will do is after our constraints are created, let's open them up from here. And in this part, we want to connect our a, B, C, and F to the hardware, like switches, LEDs, on this uh, basis tree board. Therefore, I have already prepared it, and I will just copy and paste it directly to explain you what's happening. Now over here, you are seeing set property package pin V17, get port C. What this means is that... Uh, we can just put a title like, okay, uh, sorry, switches, okay? Those are the switches that we are assigning. So wherever you see V17 on basis uh, tree, you are now seeing a video as well. I want this one to be C. So C is assigned. With these two lines of code, you are assigning V17 switch to C. Similarly, V16 switch on basis three is assigned to B. And if I change this, for example, if I made this A, then it would belong to A. But I want this one to B. Let me just return back to its original position. And W16 is assigned to A variable from my design sources, flightcontrol.vht, it's there. A, B, C, F. Now you may ask, where is F? Of course, we have it. Uh, it's always better to just um, categorize them in this way so that you don't lose control of your uh, constraint file. OK, and this one will be like this. OK, we have uh, pin U16. Uh, LED U16 on basis 3 will be assigned to F from our design source. This is all we have to do. Then let's come back here. And we will run synthesis. Run synthesis. OK. Of course, save it all the time before synthesizing. You don't need to change anything in here. And we will wait on design runs tab until we have a successful, um, how can I say, uh, synthesis. OK, we have synthesis successfully completed. Now I will just cancel this part to show you one more step which might be helpful in understanding if you have been successful or not we will come to let's close those ones and simulation sources right click on simulation sources add sources we will see if uh, this implementation works this uh, code works by using uh, something called uh, waveforms it will be a timing diagram to match with our truth table. Add or create simulation sources. Next. Um, actually, we can just create a file. And these are called test bench. OK, test bench files. I've written test bench over here, corrected this to VHDL. OK, finish. It will just, uh, I will not write anything here because I will not use ports. We will use signals this time. So we don't need an entity this time. OK, yes, has not been changed. I was just working on it. <laughs> That's why. Now, when you come here, here you see flight control. When you click on this this uh, file, flight control, uh, vht.vht will open from design sources. And we have this test bench, an empty, unchanged file. So we have to 
set this test bench file by right clicking on it as top set as top and it will be bolt just wait a second okay now test bench is bolt this is what we want we want to use this one as the simulation file as i've said we will not add something to this entity part we will not do it like the previous one we will not use the ports instead i will just come under my architecture and assign signals. Signals are just internal wires within that system which are not assigned to any ports so they cannot be expressed on the board as a port like a switch LED. They cannot be assigned. Those are just internal wires. Um, our computer uh, will assume that they have been there and they're just signals. They have been, they can be connected to anything. For example, by using signals, inputs can be outputs at the same time or Outputs can be inputs for something else. They're just signals, very good. So for this purpose, we just write signal A, B, C, and F, and we will just put columns and uh, std underscore logic and semicolon. We have created signals A, B, C, and F. They can be just anything, okay? You can just connect them to each other. Now I will come to this begin part under architecture and write process. A process is something that runs just like a Python script because Python, C++, any other programming languages, it runs from <clears throat> top to bottom. And for process, we have to say begin. The process will begin and we'll write, write end process. So whatever we write between this begin and end process under the process, so in between here, it will run from top to bottom, just like any other programming language. So we have to initialize our truth table rows. For example, we will do row zero. So we will write A is equal to, by using single quotations, not double quotation marks, we will say it's equal to zero. And then we will write B is equal to zero. And I will write C is equal to, sorry, zero, right? Okay. And also, don't forget to put a semicolon uh, between this end process as well. And this is how we initialize our values. Next, what we will write is to wait for one nanoseconds. So that in timing diagram, we will have a one nanosecond gap. And then we will just go on by saying that if f is equal to one, which is the case that we want for row one in our true table, then report by double quotations pass for input zero, 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 this one. Else, report double quotations fail for input zero 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 so we will understand which input was mistaken if we have a mistake in our simulation then we will write and if and this is how an if works do you see this this is how it's going to work if f is equal to one the case that we want then report pass for input zero 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 in tcl console or here else report fail for input 000, then we will say end if to show that our if condition has come to an end. And then uh, we can just say, wait for one nanosecond again, okay? How, how, like, it doesn't matter. How much, how much time you want between the uh, change of variables is just fine. It's going to be implemented here, so no problem. Then you will write, of course, A, will be assigned a new value and you can just copy and paste it okay and if there are variables that you don't need then we will jump on to our row one in the truth table you can just copy and paste those initialized variables right and you will just make c is equal to one and you might realize that you don't need to just reassign a and b values you can delete them you can keep them however you want then you can copy this part 
okay and for zero zero one uh, if f is equal to one then report pass for input zero zero one this case and else report fail for input zero zero one then we will understand oh this input gave an error so i have to recheck it to see if i if my true table matches so after we end the process we have one last thing we will connect this test batch file to our flight control.vht file and for this purpose we'll write dut we will um complete a unit test unit test dut stands for this then entity i am saying that call the entity that i have done under my work that i have to write flight underscore control the name of this file should be written here flight uh, underscore control i'm saying that call entity from this file and entity you remember here and i'll say control a uh, port port from that entity of this file and map write a b c and f and this uh, semicolon now we are done let's save the project we will say run simulation run behavioral simulation yes please let's see what will happen we will see a green and black timing diagram just looking like an oscilloscope and we will understand if true table is working or not now once it's open you will see something just like this and you can just say zoom fit if it doesn't work then you can just zoom inside of this data to see where our data exists yeah just like this i you can just select any part of data by using this bar okay let me just complete it like this okay now you can see when it is zero 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 a is zero in by you can use this yellow cursor like uh, in a timing diagram and switch between values okay a0 b0 c0 f is one okay very good we wanted to see this zero zero one one and you can just see any value that you have wanted and then in the tcl console you can click here you can just make it larger by scrolling in this way and you will see that all of them after running have given a pass value do you see this pass 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 no fail this means that uh, our simulation worked correctly now in the next part we will run implementation it's here we click on run implementation say okay do not change anything and this will see if we have made a logical design in terms of the match between our design sources and also uh, how can i say our uh, constraints if they have a mismatch if they have something illogical it will just report us back okay after this if you want you can see your implemented design but for this project we don't really need it that much we will say generate bitstream now while it's being generated generating bitstream means that it will be converted to ones and zeros and therefore we will be able to uh, place this code inside of our processor on basis tree okay now what we need to do is we will just take a micro usb cable for example in this case mine looks something like this a micro usb cable then i will just plug it on my basis tree board just like this and let's connect this one to our computer's usb port while your bitstream is being generated you can just connect it and if you also turn on the switch on this side you will see that it's just going to have a a uh, built-in function that's generating and if you just switch them up the uh, led on that switch on top of that switch will turn on 
when you open it and the uh, seven segmented display is also counting up one by one okay we are done then we will say open hardware manager after generating bitstream click on okay um, please remind me later <laughs> okay here no hardware target is open we will say open target you can say auto connect or open new target if you haven't connected your basis tree uh, to an uh, hardware manager you have to select open new target this time i will say auto connect because mine is already connected before it might take some time by the way uh, please uh, be patient while working with vivado okay it's now auto connected there are no debug cores we see program device here program device once i click on program device and select the bitstream file that i would love to see that we have generated then click on ok and you will say program and you will see that uh, our seven segmented display will not uh, count anymore like it will look a little bit dimmer and our program will work just as we want it. And now you will watch a video of it's uh, working properly. After VHDL uh, on basis 3 FPGA board, I would like to also show you how you can use integrated circuits to implement this design on a breadboard. So you will only watch a demo of it. And if you liked it, please tell me in the comments so that I will show you how you can use your broad breadboard and also integrated cir uh, circuits like a counter, AND gate, NOR gate, XOR gate, anything uh, to implement a logical circuit like a combinational circuit design on a breadboard by using ICs, resistors, LEDs and switches. Thank you very very much for watching this video everyone, please do not forget to subscribe and like this video and share your thoughts with me in the comments section so that I will have some feedback from you. This was my first digital circuit design lecture, see you in the next video, bye bye.